Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototopus Mystery, Part 255, The Fall of Angels, Part 2. Scripture indicates, as a result of the coming judgments, understanding of the function of society will totally alter. In other words, our society today is built off of a fallacy. Mm. It's built off of a lie. And the lie constitutes class distinctions. It constitutes pursuits that are not productive. It constitutes a belief system which is designed to fail. So when the kingdoms fall, the nations fall, their societies, the things, the belief systems that held the societies together are going to fall. Turn to <clears throat> Isaiah 24, verse 1. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty. The word empty there comes from a Hebrew term, bokok, which means waste. So it's not tohu vavoro. No. Maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down. <clears throat> now this phrase, turneth it upside down, in the Hebrew interlinear is distorts its face. So, the beginning of sorrows and its culmination, as we said before, everything, the terrain of the earth is going to radically change. Okay. The <coughs> topography of the constituent um, features are going to to change. Mm. Change its place. Isaiah 24, verse 2. <clears throat> and it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with the mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. Society is going to collapse. There's going to be no distinctions. No borrowers, no buyers, no lenders, no banking system, <clears throat> no teachers, no bosses, no servants. Everything in society is going to collapse. Yes. Does this feed into the same timeline as those who throw their silver and gold into the streets. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why? Because it's all built off of a lie. Okay. And <clears throat> the, um, the judgment <clears throat> is basically destroying the whole Luciferian order of what man has perceived to be his reality, which has never been a reality, it's been based off of a lie. Now, Scripture indicates the Adamic world will no longer function. Turn to Jeremiah 24, I mean Jeremiah 4, verse 23. I beheld the earth, <coughs> and lo, it was without form. Exactly what <coughs> Genesis. Genesis 1 says, Tohu Baru. 
and void. In the heavens, they had no light. So you look at the earth, <clears throat> the way it was looked at in Genesis, the first chapter, and uh, the way it's looked at in Isaiah, the 24th chapter. This is a wreckage. It's a ruin. Everything on the surface world has collapsed. Yes. So why was two different words used? Because you have different conditions. And the prophets are trying to describe a plurality of conditions. Genesis 1, <clears throat> you didn't have birds, you didn't have men, you didn't have trees. You had a different state that went out of existence. Isaiah is showing uh, what this looks like at a time of destruction. It's going to incorporate the, the Tohu Boburu of Genesis 1 plus the Bakak of, Genesis, of uh, Isaiah 24. Conditions, as he's trying to describe the condition of that reality. <clears throat> it's without form and void in the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and they tremble, and all the hills move lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. Excuse me. Yes. Well, you just read. Jeremiah 4, verse 23 and 24. We'll read again. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heaven, yeah. and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. So this is the enemy condition at the end of the pronouncement. At the end of, turn to Luke 21. <clears throat> Verses 10 to 11. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. <coughs> and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilence, and fearful sights. Great signs shall there be from heaven. This is Isaiah 24, verse 1. This is Jeremiah 4, verse 23. Earth is going to be a wasteland. Why? Because the Lord has pronounced it, a judgment on it. Your bodies from one end of the world to the other. Jeremiah 25, verse 30. All of these scriptures are talking about the same event. <clears throat> the judgment that he pronounces <clears throat> upon the human race. Everything dealing with human society is going to collapse. I can't stress that enough. I've been saying this for months. It's going to be changes, radical changes. It will never be the same again. Yes. Will this be the, the biggest judgment ever and will be the biggest judgment ever? No. Okay. Armageddon is bigger, right? Sure. Okay. The second coming will dwarf this. Mm. Okay. We think it's really something because in actuality it is. Man has never experienced this type of judgment before. But it's only the beginning. Beginning of the solo. Yeah. People have been compared or <coughs> trying to compare the no, noahic, noahic judgment. Mm -hmm. I learned that word only the other day. <laughs> <laughs> of the flood, mm -hmm. N-O-A-H-I-C. And the flood experience, of course, because it's worldwide, so many uh, different human, human uh, peoples, and this judgment. There is no comparison, because the Lord himself lists, as you just told me earlier, everybody's egregious transgressions and they hear it all in an instance 
That alone has got to be terrifying to the bone. It has to be. Not only that, the, the Genesis judgment, Genesis 6 is YHVH. This is Elohim. You can't compare right. it. To, yes. Right. That's a great point. So, Noah, there's a flood during Noah's time. Mm -hmm. Eight people live. Right? Mm -hmm. And then now we got all the people that we have here. Was there anybody living on the interior of the earth that survived that? Everybody. Everybody in the earth survived <laughs> that. Sure. Yes. Sure. The judgment wasn't on the subterranean, it was on the surface world. Right. So we're talking about <clears throat> multitudes of nations of people that are still alive in the interior of the earth. Sure. None of those societies would touch. Yes. Will they come under judgment? Ultimately, yeah, yes. sure. Okay. Everything's going to come under judgment because yeah. it's all Luciferian. <clears throat> but let's go on. We're getting a picture here. Now, <clears throat> how is it you don't see anything dealing with the Luciferian society? He's looking at, he's describing devastation. He's describing ruin. He's describing the human race as virtually incapacitated. I'm posing you the question to you. Why isn't he showing us the Luciferian civilizations? The four Luciferian empires. Because they're to be used to continue the desolation of humanity. No. Okay. But you're close. Because they haven't arrived yet. On the surface. I, was, I see what you mean. Okay, yes. yes. Okay, that makes sense. Now, sense. turn to Daniel 7. So everything we're discussing and will discuss <coughs> is purely that short time period before we see the first of the lesser kings yes. coming up from the fourth empire. All right. Yes. How long is that period of time? Very you? short, very short period. Weeks, months? <laughs> if that? <laughs> Maybe... Um, The time that the human race is wiped out, minutes. Minutes. Hmm. Blank. Which is part of the judgment. Okay. He destroys and then he authorizes those that are going to be the beneficiaries of the de destroyed regions. Daniel 7, verse 23. He said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. Now, I want to focus on something here. Very important. The next statement. Which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. What I characterize this as <clears throat> the earth at this time will transit from a planetary state to an angelic matrix. The scripture is consistently emphasizing <clears throat> alteration. Shall be diverse. The word diverse there comes from a Hebrew term, Sina, means changed, altered, from all kingdoms. Daniel 7, verse 19. Look at verse 19. Same chapter. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse, Sina, altered, from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass. <clears throat> Drop down to verse 23. Again. The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse. From all kingdoms shall devour the whole earth, shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. So what's being said here, and emphasized, is that once this civilization, 
human order is done away with, totally wiped out, everything is going to change from the Adamic order to the multipl multiplicity of a Luciferian matrix order. Because they don't live in a linear uh, 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 environment, they live in plurality. So you should understand that the term angelic matrix tells us what we're currently calling the Earth Matrix, which evidently houses human and hominid species in those elements of the matrix. The, the, the dominion of what I've just said is completely changed to angelic. That's, that's what you're saying. Yeah. So if you went to any part of the matrix and you were able to go through the connections, at that time, everything would be purely Luciferian. Yes. Hmm. <coughs> Uh, what you see here, basically, <coughs> in verse 23, explains it. Shall devour the whole earth. It means it will engulf the whole world. How does it engulf? With its influence. So this is the, it devours the whole earth matrix, is what we should The understand. whole planet is what this is referring to. Okay, the, Edamic, the Edamic world is what it's referring to. At what point does the whole matrix become Luciferian? Next part of the scripture. Okay. In all kingdoms, <clears throat> devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. It breaks it in pieces because it breaks the surface with its different kingdoms. Okay. <coughs> really, literally fragments the surface world. And when it fragments the surface world, the, the fourth empire influence now dominates all. The, man now is in a Luciferian. Uh, matrix. He's not on a planet any longer. With all the reality that goes with it. Are the second stringers who've been cast down and had their power removed and are now in the interior regions able to experience the influence of the first stringers, the kings, who have now taken over? It won't matter to them. They're out of the picture. So they don't experience anything? They experience imprisonment. In the pit. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> so, Mr. Jones, what I'm getting, what's coming right now, and I hope it doesn't dist distract from what, what we're talking about here, is that the only way that a Christian can go through this reality, this dimension, this this reality, whatever you want to call it is to be born again. You can't be called a Christian unless you are born again. Exactly. Therefore, now, if you are not born again, you are putty in Lucifer's hand because you, you don't have a, an owner. Your owner, you're, you are property to him. You're going into the next passage of our lesson. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, there's no hope for, no, but for anybody that doesn't consider Jesus. You've noticed. There's no hope for anybody that is not committed once they become born again. You've Those noticed. Those not committed are pretty much in the same boat. Look, we've got some scripture to illustrate just what, you, what you're referring to. Amen. It's the next principle. Scripture indicates all humans who do not have the Holy Spirit within them will come under the influence of a Luciferian being of the Fourth Empire. And that being's mindset will become his, the human's belief system, his God. Everyone will have a job, will have a God, excuse me. That's where <clears throat> the totality of polytheism comes into being. The human order, the human belief system has been forever destroyed. Mind of the humans. Everything that these people hold dear their life you can no longer function in a Luciferian society. So what do they got left? One or two things. If you've got the Spirit in you, you're going to gravitate toward the Lord if you commit. If you don't, you got no choice. It's over. You're done. Turn to Revelation, the 13th chapter. We're going to go from here to the ultimate <coughs>
Verse 8. Revelation 13, verse 8, And all, A-L-L, -L, that dwell upon the earth, O human race, shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Go to Daniel, the 12th chapter. Verse 1. <clears throat> And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. Then there shall be a time of trouble, such as was never since there was a nation, talking about great tribulation, even to that same time. And at that time the people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And he can't tell you any more. He can't emphasize it any more. If you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, if you're not born again, if your name's not in the book of life, that's it. And come under a Luciferian influence, and your destiny is going to be in either regions of the lake of fire. Oh, Mr. Jones. Yeah. Was my name in the Lamb's Book of Life before I became born again? Of course. It's written in before the foundation of the world. The is everybody in that same way? Sure. Okay. Sure. All right. Well, the humans were written in from the foundation of the world because they didn't exist before the foundation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of the world. Yeah. Sure. But they're all there too. Right. You know what? I'm going to have to unlearn some stuff so I can make room for some the new stuff. Some more, right? right. <laughs> you know, it's like I first the first time I hear it. Oh yeah, that's right. There's that. There's that. So that makes. If I would have remembered that, I wouldn't be answering, asking this question. But, yeah. That's okay. You can buy some new memory cards. <laughs> Walmart has some pretty cheap. Look at I got two brothers. They're, they're, he ain't heavy. He's my brother. He's going to carry my... You better believe uh, it. He's going to carry yes, it. Yes, indeed. Believe it. But what we're looking at here, brothers, this is straight from the heart of God. Mm. These people out here, they're deluding themselves. You see, you say this a lot, and we recognize every Sunday that these people are operating on a let's do the minimum, minimum attitude. Yes. They're one hour a week, so on, so forth and so forth. Because really, they're holding onto their lives, throwing the dice. This is their insurance policy. That's how they look at it. Yes. And you, you know this when you yes. speak to them. You, you, yes, they think they, they get the best. They could not comprehend that it's either all in or all out. Satan's going to be in a far deeper <laughs> torment region <laughs> than the humans will. But the idea is this. Let's take a look at it from the Father's perspective. The Father sent His Son, beloved Son, to die for a race of paramecium that He could just as well done away with and you know going on what's the meaning of paramecium paramecium is a one cell micro oh okay right and Remember. uh <coughs> yeah and uh poured everything into this race everything they don't have it in the uh, the, the, the majestic races the dawn stars the 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 the, the, the the powers, the principalities, I mean the ones that aren't fallen, never had a chance, the human race. So, to whom much is given, much is required. And the people that play fast and loose, the people that take what God has given, my God, I'm just thinking about it, I shudder, who take what God has given, and they don't, respect it, they don't value it, they cast it over the back of their shoulder, go on their merry way, 
digging in dust and the dirt and the fertilizer, thinking this is something valuable, and you spit in the eye of God. You think the Lord is is going to uh, welcome them in with open arms in eternity. That's what they think. That's what they think. You can tell from what they say. Why is there such an attraction to this building? Why is there such an accumulation of that, that, like, that minded individual? Well, whenever the Lord is going to move sovereignly, the region, the place that he's going to move sovereignly with is overrun with tares mm -hmm. so that his influence and his purpose can be blunted. Yes. When uh, the Lord made his advent into the human race, there were so many tares littering the landscape that they were waiting to kill him as soon as he made his appearance. And so it is with every place that the Father chooses to do something great, if the enemy anticipates that, he's going to try to blunt it with tear influence as much as possible. But we're also seeing leadership who were not tears beginning to behave like tears. It's influence. Mm. We all have the same regimen. We're in a war. You have to continue fighting. If you don't fight, you're going to wind up being defeated. It's 24-7 fight. And people are being lulled into a false sense of uh, assurance that they have their ticket, that everything's okay, that things are going to you know, end smoothly. That's Luciferian influence. Yeah. But let's go on. <clears throat> Now, Scripture indicates the whole life of a demic man's belief will be in serving his personal God or gods. Revelation 9, verse 20 to 21. So they wouldn't serve a Lord who is beneficial to them. But now they're forced to serve the Lord. Nah, they have no idea. No, well, no. they basically, they, the chance that they had yeah. is gone. It's all over. Christians who have the Holy Spirit in them are going to see the handwriting on the wall and they're going to become martyrs. Those that don't have the Holy Spirit in them are just going to be deceived on into their own destruction. Now, this is a judgment comes on the whole human race. Why? Because the human race is totally sold out to demons serving the Luciferian gods. Revelation 9, 20. The rest of the men which are not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not Worship devils. The works of their hands is sacrificing to demons. They're demon gods. And idols of gold and silver and brass. Representations of demons. And stone and wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Now what we find here is a direct result of the intellectuals of this age that pride themselves in their knowledge, their ability to discern, their ability to comprehend life. Well, these same individuals, if they survive, are going to wind up serving images of non-existent beings, or beings that did exist at one time, but aren't on the scene at this time, and so have impressed them that they're going to forge images in their likeness and continue to serve them. That's where the, the intellect is so degraded down to a point of non-existence that they are now a little more than primitives. Um, with no 
ability to comprehend at all objectively. <clears throat> the, the influence of the Luciferian being is totally dominating that life, that belief system. Every desire, every motive of that individual is centered on the Luciferian view of existence. To the point where the Lord brings a judgment on the whole human race, wipes out a third of it, and the rest still refuse to accept objectivity. At this point, the inference is it's still possible, but they refuse to do so. They love the, the surreal environment in which they exist. And what does that environment include? Verse 21, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Now, what we find, we're going to make a comparison here. <clears throat> their belief system is totally Luciferian. Mm. And these are all things that since they love to do anyway, I presume that they believe that they're now protected in doing it. Yes, yeah, sure. In this reality, the current reality we live in, mm -hmm. the average individual would not be worshipping a God. He would be pursuing a career or holding an office in a human audit society or teaching or entertainment or any of the number of things that you see prevalent in our society. In the Luciferian society, that's gone. Non-existent. His motive his comprehension of life centers around murders and thefts, rapes and robberies, and serving his God. That's the degree to which those experiences are going to bring the human order down to below animal level. Is the implication that the person doing these murders, thefts, slaughters, etc., is doing so in the name of their God? Is that how they look at it? Quite possibly. Mm -hmm. Remember that uh, Luciferian society is consistently called blasphemous. So in that society, good would be evil and evil would be good. Right. So the more evil you can do, the more prestige you have in right. your society. Now, the big disruptions are going to take place. Second Thessalonians, second chapter, verse 4. This to them is going to be a what would be considered a tremendous shake-up of their belief system. Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he has God, sitting so in the temple of God, showing himself that he has God. The human race is going to be worshipping its gods. And then it's going to be faced with an all-powerful individual who represents a reality, who dominates their reality, the gods they have been worshiping. It's going to be a shake-up for them uh, because their world is going to be totally brought to a point of um, collapse because they believed in their god or their gods all this time. And all of a sudden, a being arises who puts pressure on their guy to recognize him above what he has been giving them all this time. And of course, they're going to fall in lockstep with that. They're still going to worship these guys. We're going to worship, acknowledge him as the head guy. So you see the kind of world that this is, that this, the human race is heading into pell-mell. Mark Schnell, rapidly entering into a world in which it will cease to function uh, in any, re any res re respect of the way it was designed to function. 
Yes. So the, the, the whole concept behind multiple gods, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I want so many superior beings that I can count so that I can worship them and, and pay homage to them and do this and that and the other, and then, and then I'm, I'm going to do, just because i got a little practice here, I can, do a little, I can do a better job doing that same thing with this god over here. Now, why multiple gods? What, what's the point of having multiple gods? Because each god is doing something in which you are delighting in what he's doing. He's influencing you in a degenerate way, probably sexually, on a scale which you've never had an experience before and which you delight in and you wouldn't give it up at the cost of your life. Do you imagine that there is some cachet or status between humans as to who worships the most number of gods? I don't think so, because everybody's going to be caught up in his own world, doing his own thing. Delight. Turn to Revelation 17. <clears throat> this gives the point uh, perfectly. Verse 1 and 2. <clears throat> And we'll close with this. <clears throat> there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. They they love the influence of this wretched, evil, wicked spirit being. That's going to be the crack and the meth of that time. Sure. The way people behave now, today, with you know, crack and meth and these various things, where they just cannot stop it. Yeah. I, I can't go. That this puts that in the shade. Yeah, exactly. What's interesting is that fentanyl stuff. I think it takes you as close to death as you can go, but you can come back. Right. I heard it was fifty times more powerful than hell, which to me I, I can't even conceive of. Me. Where is the indication, and what can we expect will be the the the, the incidents leading up to the very first scroll being opened? When you say the first scroll, Jesus has a book. It's a it's the book of seven scrolls or something like this. Oh, the seven seal scroll. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when does the first seal open? Oh, <laughs> after the rapture and everybody's around the throne. Okay. Okay. He's he's not going to open it until his brothers are there. Okay. All right. So does that imply that's after the marriage? No. Before. That's right after the, ra the the rapture. Okay. You uh, you you're going to have the the dinner, and then everybody is going to be <clears throat> gathered around the Father's throne. The Father has the scroll in his right hand. The Son takes the scroll, and he begins to open it. And as he opens it, the brethren begin to share in the events that are taking place. Are we combined with our Counterparts at that time, or you are we? the counterpart at that time. Yes. Okay. yes, right. Now you said the dinner. Which day you talk about? The marriage supper. The marriage supper. supper. Yeah. But when does the actual marriage happen? Is what I'm asking. The end tribulation period, just okay. before he comes back. All right. So all that period, then. Wow. Well, that's eternity. So it won't mean anything. The scroll is the events of the tribulation period. Right. What I was thinking. The government. Deep State is on such an injustice mm. to the human race that I believe that they work themselves in even worse punished torment in the torment regions of hell than they would have if they had just gone on. Because they've kept hidden the existence of non-human life. That had that been brought forth, it would have at least put within the human consciousness a nodule of some truth that 
would enable them to begin to branch off on to prepare themselves for what's going to happen. You see it in the scripture. When these heavens are rent and the life forms fall out of it, people are going to drop dead of heart attacks. Other people are going to run panicking because nobody has been prepared for what's coming down the pike. They've been hidden, literally, deliberately, kept in ignorance of what's going on. Yes. Is the deep state a compilation of only demons, or are there humans involved with this demon state that have sold their souls? That's it. You have uh, tears, demons, and sell out Adamics. Mm -hmm. It's to sell out Adamics that only have the greater punishment because they sold out their brothers and sisters, right. the human race. Right for favor with the Luciferians. It's despicable. Yeah. They've been told that they're going to win this war, meaning against the Father and the Son, of course. And that Lucifer is far more powerful than that. And they believe that this is true because nothing has happened to them so far. This, this is the whole uh, understanding yeah. is based on yeah. Nothing's happened to us so far, therefore we reason he's weak, he can't do anything, he's an old man anyway, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's the whole thing. I'm amazed so when I understood that. Maybe yeah. what they said, so I was going to say the intellect is standing in their way. All, God is hidden in plain truth. Sure. The, the, what's going to happen? Yeah. Okay, so now you can get your all of your analytical experts and methods to read all you want right, and to right. find the loophole in this, but if they don't have the Holy Spirit, it's going to be revealed. Exactly. It's going to be hidden from them. Exactly correct. Exactly. So you can't correct. teach something that you don't know. So you're going to you're believing a lie as well. 